Those of us who enjoy TED Talks, those of you who've come to join us this afternoon, we tend to be wired to strive for change we want to see in the world. We see a problem or an opportunity and we get to work. Society encourages our striving with messages like, don't give up, don't ever give up, just do it. Rhodey urges us to think big, they do. As a kid, I grew up inspired by these kinds of messages, believing I could change anything as long as I worked hard enough for it. I was the kid in the neighborhood shoveling driveways, mowing lawns, making a couple bucks. I'd go off to college, I graduated from college, I joined a software company full of smart, driven people, all of us trying to make our way in the world. By the year 2000, I'm well into my adulthood, enjoying a successful career, happily married with a young son, living in a nice home in the suburbs. As far as I'm concerned, I've got it all figured out. 2001 comes along, I no longer have it all figured out. I'm about to learn some important lessons from my dad. Let me share a story. We celebrated my dad's birthday in November of that year. My three siblings and I made our way to New York City to celebrate with him. We came from all across the country, so pulling this weekend together was no easy task. But it was his 60th birthday. And besides, his cancer was getting worse. We feared this would be the last birthday we would celebrate with him. The weekend was okay. Happy birthday, Dad. Looking back, it's mostly the beginning of my dad's decline. See, dad's cancer was terminal, so there were no more goals to strive for. There were no milestones to lift his spirits. Just a series of terrible changes to endure. But along the way, my dad was to show me a different kind of striving a different definition of success. A few weeks after that New York City weekend, I went to visit my dad in upstate New York where he lived. I had been there before and on previous occasions we would stay at my uncle's ski house. I never thought much of it before, but I'd never seen dad's place. It occurred to me on the way up that we'd be going through some of his things and that we would inevitably be seeing dad's place. I grew anxious thinking that he might not like this, that might make him very uncomfortable. Later that afternoon, I follow my dad into his apartment, one room apartment, barely any space to move around. I feel hints of his shame as he starts shuffling things around to make a space for me to sit down. He tried to play it off as no big thing, but it was a big thing showing his space to me was a complete and sudden unmasking for him. We quickly settled into the business of going through his papers, got a box of papers, and for about an hour or so, I enjoyed walking down memory lane with my dad. Every piece of paper sparking memories and triggering conversation and easing the moment a little bit. Eventually, my striving flared up, and I thought to myself, we're about three hours into this thing. Barely put a dent in this box. There are boxes all over the room that we still need to get through. I've got a demanding job, a two-year-old son, a pregnant wife back home. It takes six hours to get up and back from dad's place. I'm gonna be, I, I'm not sure when I'm gonna be back again. Dad, we gotta move this thing along. Now, I didn't say that. I didn't say that out loud but my dad could feel my impatience and I could feel his discomfort and emotion rise up. I was bracing myself for his reaction. To my surprise, his reaction was to remain calm. And in that moment there, while I'm losing my cool and he's remaining calm, I got a glimpse into how my dad was going to battle his cancer. Fast forward several months, Dad now weighs about 140 pounds. He's my height. He no longer drives. He's moved in with my sister Susan. 
He can't keep down foods. He's lost his sense of taste. He's got no medical insurance, so he's stuck with the VA hospital. His world is eventually confined to just a few rooms at my sister's place. Susan's set up a bed in the den, and from there is a few steps to the bathroom, a few steps to the living room, and the front porch is over here. That's it. Stairs out of the question, my sister had to call the police a few times to help get dad back up the stairs and into the house. With barely anything left to lose, my dad wakes up one day, he can't see. You know what he said that morning? When he woke up blind, he says to my sister Susan, it's the funniest thing. I can't see. Like, huh, curious. <laughs> As if curious how his cancer is affecting his eyes or the tumor is impacting the optic nerve and this is where his head goes. So no longer able to see, read, watch TV, he finds his way to books on tape. His favorite was a documentary about the wildebeest migration across the Serengeti Plains. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom presents <laughs> that, that sort of thing. Having lost his sense of taste and his ability to keep down most foods, he discovers that he can enjoy ice cream, haagen coffee ice cream. Instead of viewing the VA hospital as a hapless bureaucratic institution that he's stuck with, my dad is proud. He's, he's proud that his service in the Navy affords him this benefit. And over time, he comes to appreciate and the doctors, the nurses that care for him so well. When his entire world is eventually reduced down to those few rooms in my sister's place, he finds a sunny little spot on the front porch and he can be found there most days enjoying a visit from friends or family or listening to his books on tape, eating his ice cream, traveling the world over in his mind. I don't know where my dad found such grace in that final year. The fact is, we grew up tiptoeing around dad a little bit. He could have a temper, and he wasn't particularly graceful when things weren't going his way. But in that final year, he was a different person. Was it something he learned in that final year? Book on tape, how to handle cancer gracefully? Was it divine intervention? These weren't rhetorical questions for me. I wanted to understand this transformation in my dad. I wanted to understand how my dad had found such grace in that final year. I wanted to emulate some of what I saw in my dad and bring it to my everyday life. I watched my dad handle cancer and terminal illness with such grace while I can barely get through my morning routine and my traffic to work with half the grace that he was showing. I was embarrassed. It was a strange mix of competitiveness and, and, and admiration for my dad. How can this man suffering these things be handling himself so much more gracefully than me suffering my trivial, relatively mundane things? It's been 16 years since my dad passed away. I've, a lot, I've had a lot of time to reflect on that period. And I've come to three key things, three main points that I tend to focus on to try to accept change more gracefully. One, own your reaction to change. My dad and I in that room, me losing my patience, he keeping his composure, my dad could have matched my frustration step for step, escalating the moment until we're both in a full out argument in that crappy little apartment in upstate New York could have ruined the day, if we ruined that moment right there in that day, I'm not sure there are any more moments between my dad and I for the rest of his life. But he didn't do that. He didn't let his emotions take over. He owned his reaction and chose 
to remain calm, despite my being not at all calm and not at all pleasant to be around. Two, the second thing I focus on, be curious in the face of change. When my dad wakes up that morning, unable to see, it's the funniest thing. I can't see anymore. It was his curiosity that took him from a negative emotion to a positive state of mind. Now he probably, he may have spent a moment in bed that morning feeling sorry for himself, being fearful of yet another change to have to deal with. If he did, he didn't linger there. He didn't wallow in that moment. His curiosity led him out of those sorts of negative moments throughout his entire life, and particularly in that final year. It's tough to remain fearful and angry and pitiful when you're filled with such curiosity for everything around you. Of all the attributes and characteristics I've inherited from my dad, I've come to appreciate and be most grateful for his curiosity, my curiosity. The third thing that I focus on to help accept change more gracefully. Visualize and practice your reaction to change. I've come to believe that we can visualize and practice how we respond to change like anything else that we strive to be better at. When my dad and I are back at that box of papers, I'm being frustrated. That was not the first time that my dad and I had found ourselves in that moment. There was a pattern, there was a repeatable pattern, a predictable pattern for how that went. And it had happened before and it happened again. As fate would have it, in a what goes around comes around sort of way, I now have a 19 year old son who sometimes loses his patience with me. And like with my dad, there's a pattern, a predictable repeater and pattern to what brings this about. I'm happy to report that after years of visualizing and practicing my response to change, I've perfected my response to change with my son losing his patience with me. I'm not sure what my son is, but I'm gonna kind of look down here so I don't make eye contact. Kind of <laughs> I haven't perfected anything. I practice and fail and practice and fail at a lot of things in my life. But like anything else that's important to me, I practice and fail, and every once in a while, if I practice and fail enough, I get a little better at it. So if you like the idea of responding to change a little more gracefully, visualize and practice how you want to be in those moments. So ultimately, Mine is not a call to action that you change something out there in the world. Mine is to suggest that while you're out there striving to change the world, thinking big and never giving up, save some of your striving energy for changing it up in here. If you can learn to accept change more gracefully up here, then you could be unbeatable out there in the world. I learned that watching my dad beat cancer every day to his dying day. And I thought that was a lesson worth sharing. Thank you.